So we'll just to wait for another two or three minutes to see if there's more people able to join the call. everyone so uh welcome to um the ninth christine call and uh let's see who's here from christine um so we have andre from the right region um michael from aaron Nurani from right paul from right and i think i saw craig but um i i'm not seeing him right now somehow Oh yes, I see him now. Um, so I see Craig from AP Nick, and it seems that this is um all I see. Um, is there anybody? Um, any Chris members? I haven't called the name. No. So um, I would like to first uh, thank LACNIC um, team for um, helping us facilitate this and scheduled meeting. Thank you so much for facilitating this. So um, let's start the meeting and uh, go through the agenda quickly. So um, in addition to the usual um, agenda, uh, what we want to discuss today is um, go through action item on um, agenda number three, issues after the last call. So I've listed the key issues that we've been uh, focusing on um, since the um, <clears throat> since the past calls. So these are contract details, defining review committee process. This is something new that was, um, um, I'm sorry. Um, so these, these are the issues that were raised after the last call. So these are the issues that we still need to um, discuss. So first is uh, contract details. So, so 3A is contract details. And um, this is something that is no, not new as an issue, but then we're still having discussions on the, um, the global mailing list. And then um, issues B and C are something that was brought up by uh, Sun um, uh, today that uh, he did actually raise these issues on the mailing list, but um, he didn't see the status. As Chris Queen. So let's uh, discuss what we want to um, well, let's discuss our position on these. And then our agenda item four, I would like to confirm the status of um, issues that we've been discussing. So um, A is the issues that, that is to be reviewed on the mailing list. We haven't discussed them at the call, but they seem to be quite straightforward ones that we can just discuss at the mailing list. 
and then B, um, Chris Team's position for major issues that we've been discussing, and then also cover up the, um, what we're going to reflect on the issues status list. And then lastly is um, agenda item five. I uh, would like to prepare for the announcement for the second draft, which we're planning um, to, tomorrow um, on the 8th of January. So we want to cover the announcement and also we want to have an agreement on the deadline for comments to be submitted for text um, text, that's text suggestions um, um, made from Christian members per different issues. And then also timing for Michael to share the updated version within Chris' team for um, and our secretariat to uh, post on the website. So those are the major um, points that I'd like to discuss. And um, is there anything else that you, you'd like to discuss at the call today? I did actually um, see the post from Nurani uh, for suggesting to add some information on the Chris team web. So uh, it might be good to quickly go through that at the very end. If there's no other, um, anybody have any suggestions? No? Okay, so then let's um, go on to the details of the agenda. And thank you, Nurani, um, for clarifying that Alan, Alan can't find the details of how to join the call. So maybe we can wait a little bit for um, for Alan. But I think um, actions review is straightforward, so I think we can uh, go ahead. So um, for action um, A and B, um, her man has actually sent me the updates that uh, this is still um, on work and it's going to be updated. The minutes will be posted on the website and version control of the draft is still on work. So he, it's noted as the um, actions to be addressed, but it's not completed yet. And I also sent um, 2C announcement on the comments um, on the IANA global list that um, the global NRO list um, that the comments are closed on the edited first draft of a proposal. And I think that's the status of the, our major actions. And we'll certainly go through the status of um, each um, issues that uh, text has been suggested. So let me move on to agenda number three. So um, issues under this uh, discussions after the last call. So um, maybe start with the straightforward ones and then go. So I'll just to skip 3A and then come back to this. So let's go to 3B first. Defining review committee process. So um, the the suggestion suggestion here is that um, um, before the transition takes place. Um, the Sun feels that we should actually um, complete defining how the review committee will be built. So the process um, of um, set, uh, setting up nominations or defining the charter, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, so he's not suggesting that we need to add every single detail in our proposal at this stage, but um, uh, to just simply to uh, state that uh, we should have these um, details and um, completed, defined before the transition takes place. So um, does anybody have any comments about this? Um, so my personal impression is that it seems to be quite straightforward and I don't find any issues in incorporating this as a part of our um, proposal stating that these uh, details should be defined and um, including the charter and the process of um, calling the nominations and things like that um, before the transition takes place. So if there's no objection or observed from the group team members, I would like to suggest that we incorporate this suggestion and then we will um, reflect this in our draft. 
Thank you, Andre, for clarifying. No objection. I'm not seeing um, any other comments, so uh, let's incorporate this. Uh, Andre, thank you as well for, for no objection. So let's incorporate this in the draft. Um, uh, would anybody be able to help in incorporating this song? Um, Alan, I think you just joined the call. Just to uh, update, we're covering Agenda 3B, and then I was just suggesting to reflect some suggestion that we should define the details of um, review committee um, on how the nominations will be done, including the charter and things like that before the, the transition takes place. Um, I was wondering if you would be able to help us uh, reflecting this in our draft since you're covering the part on review committee. Um, I'm not sure if Alan is able to hear us. Alan, are you able to hear us? Uh, yes, I have just connected a few seconds ago. Okay, um, thank you. Um, then um, I was wondering, Alan, um, we're covering a 3B in the agenda, and then this part is uh, addressing suggestion made by Sun on the um, the, uh, the global mailing list today that we should be uh, we should clearly state that um, we will define and complete the details of how how we were um, going to build the review committee, including defining the charter and how we will uh, call for nominations and things like that before the transition takes place. And it seems to be um, the general observation is that there's no objection in incorporating this as a part of our proposal. So would you be able to help us reflect this um, on the um, on the draft that we're we're preparing to do a covering review committee section? Mm. Uh, yes, I can try to do that, but I don't think I agree. Um, I, I think we should not go into so much detail in the draft. And uh, Suan has a point that the uh, the process should be defined before the transition, but that's not the same thing as the process being defined um, before the 15th of January. So I, I think that we should leave the, the text pretty much as it is, uh, saying that each RIR will define their own process. Um, understood, um, Alan. And just to clarify, um, I don't think uh, we're suggesting to uh, define all the details in our draft uh, by the 15th of January. Um, it's just simply to say that we should actually define the, these details before the transition takes place. And I'm seeing several hands up, so um, I would like to go to Paul. Oh, sorry, I just didn't know whether they were coming through. I think I'm a repeat offender with the hands up. I apologize. Um, I didn't see them. They, they, they were as a lag there. I, I apologize. Um, I, I must agree here with, with, with Alan. Um, I understand what Sun is, is proposing, and sure, before the transition happens, I think each RIR community needs to make sure that they have their discussions and define what works for them in choosing this review committee. I don't think that this is the responsibility of the Chris team. This is totally out of the scope of this group. Um, if we're looking at actually defining what are the things we need to do, I think that, uh, and this is, correct me if I'm wrong here, Alan, I think what needs to be added to the text is that, yes, this needs to happen before the transition, but defining exactly what needs to happen, I think that needs to go back to the communities. I would like them to be responsible for defining uh, things like the charter and what needs to go into this and, and what have you. I don't think that this is the purview of the Chris team to, to deal with this part of the re review committee. Thank you. Thank you, um, Paul, for uh, expressing support for Alan. So again, um, just to be clear, um, I think nobody is suggesting that we're defining these details in the um, in our proposal at this stage. And um, I would uh, like to um, rephrase my question uh, to be more clear. 
So not defining any of the details in our draft um, to be submitted to ICG. And would anybody feel concerned about stating that these details need to be defined uh, before the transition takes place? Thank you, um, Paul, for stating that you're okay with this. So we're not defining anything in our proposal and just simply stating that these things need to be defined before the transition takes place. And um, I see Nurani um, commenting that this is um, consistent with um, her understanding about what's being suggested. And um, and I see uh, Michael agreeing with um, Alan that we don't. We just need a simple statement, and so we don't need to go into the details of defining um, other things than saying the process itself. So I see Andre. Yeah, thank you, Zumi. I think I agree with all the comments on 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 the chat. I'm not sure we're addressing the real problem here, though. I think what Sona was asking is rather uh, what would be the process for developing the charter uh, of this review committee and whether we can use the same mechanism we use for developing this proposal uh, for developing the charter. I think that's the main question. So we can say, yes, Chris, team can continue and define the charter of this group, or we can say, uh, we don't know. It should happen, but we don't know. So I think those are two things that uh, I, I would like to get some clarity. Are we talking about the same thing? Thank you, uh, Andre, for this um, clarification. I, your interpretation seems to be uh, a little bit different from my understanding of uh, Sim's comments. Let's just uh, take a look at what exactly he said in the latest post um, so that we all share the same understanding about what's being suggested. So would you go to um, the mail that was posted by CERN um, today on the global list and um, I have to see this myself. Um, So the thread title is uh, thank you for the feedback and update on Christine and um, it was uh, sent about um, three and a half hours ago and then so his, I'm just going to read it by word. Um, I had made suggestion about process of building the review team i.e. the formation, charter and all the determined before all be determined before the transition is completed. May I know what the Chris team decided about this? So um, I hope you're able to find it and uh, observe a little bit. And my interpretation is he's simply saying that um, these things need to be defined before the transition is completed. He's not suggesting that these details need to be incorporated in our, our proposal. No, no, no. That that also what, what not what I was suggesting. I think I I totally agree that we should stay at high level and our response should contain those details. But I think uh, the question is how this charter will be developed. Do CRISP team care? Do CRISP team see a role in developing this charter after the proposal is submitted, or CRISP team role is over once we submit this proposal? So I see Alan's hand. Uh, yes, so I think my answer to both these issues is that it's out of scope. Um, building the review team, the formation and charter et al, I think that's up to the uh, 
NRO EC to define the charter and it's up to the RIR communities to define the process for appointing uh, representatives to it. So that's out of scope for the CRISP team. And then for development of the contract and SLA, again, that's out of scope for the CRISP team. We've We've given some guidelines and then we're going to let the RIR staff develop the charter. I mean, sorry, the SLA and the contract. So to be clear, I'm going to to Sion saying, we agree that these are important points, but we think they're out of scope for the CRISP team. Okay, thank you, Alan, for this comment. And um, I see Nurani's hand up. Thank you, Zumi. Um, I, I, I would agree with Alan's uh, comment. It is, it's definitely out of scope and outside the, the mandate of this group. Uh, and then just two additional points. Uh, one is that it, it seems that there was convergence on uh, that the RIRs, uh, the RIR communities themselves were to define um, uh, the selection of, of representatives uh, for each respective region, as long as they did it, uh, they do it in, a, in an open and transparent way. So that would uh, support that argument. Uh, and then I, I also think that this review team, um, I think we'd be shooting ourselves in the foot if we sat here and defined uh, a charter and, and a task for this review team uh, when we don't know what the situation will be uh, uh, 10 years down the line, um, these things need to come from the community and, and need to be um, developed in a bottom-up way like any other things in, in the RAR structures. So those are my uh, two personal reflections, but I think it's quite clear in general that it's outside the scope of this um, team. Thanks. Thank you, Narani. And um, so I, I think I observed that there's no consensus in um, in reflecting this in any way. And then, so just to summarize the, the two um, elements. First, there's no consensus in incorporating any of the details um, within a proposal, and that's because that's out of scope. And equally, there's no consensus to mention that it should be um, completed before the transition, because again, this is um, not within the um, the activity of Chris team to uh, make a decision on this. So, um, if um, is that a fair um, summary of what we've discussed and agreed on? I don't see any hands up. So, um, so I think this will be. Um, so, Alan has mentioned it's the same similar case for three C. So community engagement and um, developing contract. So um, on the mailing list, the the current post, um, the current discussion was yes, we we actually say that this is out of scope, but um, we actually mentioned that we strongly encourage the RIRs to um, engage the community when developing um, the SLA. So if we say that. B is out of scope, then would we also take the same position for C, that we simply just say that this is out of scope and not incorporate anything in um, our draft? I'd like to hear your feedback on this point. So, um, so I would try to ask a um, question in a little bit a more challenging way. So does anybody support incorporating this? Um, Alan, oh, Alan, please. Uh, yes, uh, I, I put my hand up a little earlier in response to your previous issue. Um, I wanted to say that we, we should not be developing the, the terms of reference for the, the review committee or anything like that. But I think it is okay for us to suggest in our draft that um, the terms of reference should be finalized before the transition. Um, so sorry that that was your previous issue, not, not on the current agenda topic. 
Um, on the current topic, I, I think I have a similar opinion. We, it's, it's okay for us to say that we think it should be finalized, but it's out of scope for us to actually do the work. Oh, thank you, Alan, um, for clarifying this. And I see Nirani agreeing to Alan. So, um, so I will phrase the question again. Does anybody feel, um, Andre? Hey, Zemi. Uh, well, I suggested some text that the CRISP team is essentially tasking the area staff with developing the text of the agreement and. Uh, encouraging the area staff to do this in a transparent manner that engages the community throughout the process. I think if we feel strongly about that, that we should reflect this in the proposal and therefore we accept community uh, desire to have this process transparent and open, although I think this is implied, we can include this phrase in, in, in our proposal. But other than that, I think, yeah, it's completely out of scope. Thank you, Andre. So um, you're talking about uh, issue 3C. So I think, uh, again, I'm not seeing objection about mention. It, it is out of scope to define it uh, for Christine, but maybe we can refer that uh, we actually encourage um, RIRs to uh, do um, transparent um, process in developing the SLA. So um, does anybody, yes, support Andre, encourage, so we actually state in a proposal for 3C that um, we can actually um, describe this um, in our proposal. We, we can say that um, it is out of scope, clearly state that this is out of scope, but then we, we do encourage um, RIRs to um, engage the community in developing the contract. So does anybody have any comments about this point? So I see support from Paul about um, incorporating this into um, our draft. So regarding 3C, I have observed um, an agreement uh, to incorporate this, uh, again, I support from Nirani as well, to um, incorporate this uh, statement into a proposal. So um, this is re related to SLA. So would Paul and Narani be able to help us reflect it in our draft? Sure, I'll work with Paul since Paul's back. Narani. So, um, and I also see support from Esteban. So um, let me again go back to 3B because maybe my question was not very clear. Oh, please. Oh, hi there. Yes, of course, Narani and I will work on that. I, I, Narani's just said, of course we will. Um, I just wanted to add something to this. You know, we have to be a little bit careful here because I think the realm that you're going into, I think it's it's great for uh, the Chris team to kind of suggest that, that, that something should be done. But, you know, past that, and I think this is where we are in our agreement, Past that, I think we need to be careful that we're not trying to do the jobs of the RIR boards and the CEOs, because I think what was dis what was agreed, if, if my memory serves me correctly, is that the review committees would be uh, would happen, and this is something that the NROEC would be responsible for making happen within the open existing processes that happen in in in, in selecting these three candidates from each region uh, to serve on this team. Um, I think that once you start getting into defining all of this and the rest of this, this has to happen between RIR CEOs, so be it RIR staff, and their communities. And I think it will. Past that, I really think that this team, like, you know, I know that we were agreeing this. I, I think this team needs to stay away from that. I think this is, this is, this is clearly more than just mentioning, yes, it's a good idea to do this, I think we need to, to, to step away from this. The review committee bit has been noted. There is a whole section on it. And I think that the RIRs, if it's in this, are going to have to take this up and work with it as they do with everything. Yes, um, 
Paul, thank you. And I agree. Um, uh, Michael, please. Yes, hi. Um, I just wanted to comment that I can see why uh, people bring up this issue, but I have to agree that I think it is out of scope. It may be tangential at, at the most in the sense that I think it may touch on what we do, but um, I still feel that it is, I mean, my personal observation is it seems to be out of scope for our work, which then leads me to the question um, that I'd like to ask for the group is that uh, we are con considering putting something in the proposal about this and, uh, you know, is there really any change that is necessary at this point, you know, I kind of echo some of what Paul is saying, too, in the sense of, you know, even by mentioning a comment that, oh, we encourage RAR staff to do it this way, um, you start to get into that, you know, in, out of the sandbox, essentially. And so, you know, my question is, is that do we really need to put something in there or because if it's not substantially, if there's no substance to the change, then um, is it really necessary to put it in there? So. Uh, that's just my question there. I mean, obviously, I'm going to go with what I'll incorporate into the draft what everybody decides on this. But um, that was just my observation to see if it was absolutely necessary to put anything in or if we should just have a good response um, to this community feedback. Thank you. Thank you, Michael, for um, for this uh, very good point. So I, um, from what I understood, what you're saying is by even by mentioning that um, this would be encouraged, even if we explain this uh, out of scope. It's a little, it's very difficult to draw the line between what we're responsible and what we're not. So, um, and yes, I um, and Andre, it's definitely not substance. It's more like um, it doesn't give more substance. It doesn't allow us to do anything for the proposal. So, and I'm seeing everybody agreeing with Michael. Um, so thank you for making this excellent point and also to Paul earlier. So um, we, we did have, we did go back and forth about whether or not to mention it at all. But um, based on this um, comment, um, the last two comments, it seems that people are agreeing not to mention this at all. That, that might, that will cause uh, less confusion and it doesn't really add any um, additional um, concrete um, substance, even if we describe it. So um, <coughs> I think um, our direction on these two points is that we will just simply say that these two are out of scope of Chris team's work, and um, so therefore we don't consider it uh, appropriate to mention it in our draft. Does anybody have any more uh, feedback about this? No, I'm not seeing any comments. So um, thank you for all the comments for 3B and C. And then um, let me go to 3A. So this is about contract details. And um, this ha there has been quite a, a bit of uh, ongoing discussions about um, termination um, clause of the contract, whether the um, contract term should be um, fixed or not. And then there has, I think the discussion started to sidetrack on the definition of MOUs and agreement and things like this. And then <clears throat> um, the latest comment that's posted uh, related to this issue was Hans, uh, from Hans-Peter Holm that um, we probably want to go back to high level of principles rather than going too much in, into the details. So it's important that we list the high level principles and then leave the rest of the details for um, the legal staff of the RIR to um, implement it. So does anybody have any comments about this? I'm not seeing any um, comments. Um, so I would like to um, reconfirm whether our current draft actually says whether that um, whether the contracts um, should be uh, fixed or not. Fixed term, I mean. Uh, so I see Paul um, agreeing. Oh, sorry, Andre. Uh, thank you, Zumi. Well, our current version, I think it says that it should be fixed. 
Uh, at the same time, I agree with uh, Hans Peter Holland. I think a uh, high level principle is what we are kind of defining here with a community input. At the same time, I think, um, well, all the discussion shows that we are working on a solution and not um, probably articulating the real issue we're trying to solve. And this is my question to the team, but I think the main issue, what we discussed before, is that the we want the community to control the destiny, right, to fate, and not ICANN and not something else, right? So we want to enable communities to walk away if community decide to do so. I think I see a lot of um, echo from Antonio. Uh, thank you. Um, so um, rather than entering into disputes whether the SLAs were not met or whether other conditions were not met, we should allow ourselves flexibility to walk away if some other serious reasons arise, right? And I think if community decide that they want another operator, they don't need to justify to anyone uh, why they need another operator for those functions. And I'm not really sure how to capture that. I think a fixed term was a way to capture that, that, well, it automatically implies that you can walk away. Uh, but I think that's the real issue we're talking about. Thank you, Andre. This is excellent point. So um, perhaps rather than explicitly, explicitly saying whether this should be fixed term or not, maybe it's uh, more appropriate for us to um, to actually describe this um, element that we think is important and then ensure a way of um, um, a, 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 a contract term that would best uh, address this point. Um, how does uh, anybody feel? So rather than just uh, defining at this stage whether the contract should be fixed term or not, uh, describe this, um, this um, thinking that we think is important, that we are the one in control and this uh, contract allows us to um, terminate if we think that um, the operator is not uh, appropriate and that should, um, the, the term of the contract should also reflect the way that would best address this point. How do people feel about uh, this? Yeah, I've got my hand up. Um, sorry to interrupt. Please. Um, I actually like um, what Felice uh, suggested on the mailing list. But from a legal perspective, one of the things you can have, even if it's not a fixed term contract, is um, a term that a provision that says that the contract can be terminated by any party giving the other party 12 month notice, for example. Something as big as this, I think, you know, if there's a 12 month notice without cause, um, might actually achieve what we're trying to achieve. Um, so as I understand it, what we want is the RIRs to be in control and not locked into a contract permanently. Um, and what Hans is saying and what Felice is saying is that for continuity, it'd be nice to know that the contract, um, you know, will, will stay with one operator unless we want to get out. So there's no reason why a, the contract can't say, can't say that uh, any party can terminate by giving the other party a 12 months notice. I, I wonder whether that would achieve um, what we're setting out to do. Um, thank you, Craig. So are you suggesting that we actually, um, so in addition to um, possibly describing the uh, um, this uh, spirit we think is important. We actually um, propose a particular uh, way to address. So for example, automatic renewal and then um, giving 12 months notice. Um, is that your suggestion? Yes, um, perhaps um, say uh, automatic renewal, um, but I don't know, you know, whatever notice that's necessary, but with a sufficient notice um, period, um, so that there's enough time to arrange a transition. And this is really the essence of, I think, Felice's um, uh, comment on the, on the public mailing list. So I'm actually just restating her idea, but adding a legal point that a contract can express 
to that it can be terminated for convenience, not for any cause. Mm -hmm. Understood. And I, I personally think this this approach is reasonable, but at the same time, I'm just wondering if it's wise for us to define these details at this stage, given that any details we give, we tend to get other suggestions and questions about why we do this, or we have to, we should uh, take another approach and things like this. So um, I'd, I'm, I'd be interested to hear Chris' team's feedback, whether we should simply um, state the principle we think is important, or in addition to this, we should actually state the, um, the, the details of the approach as suggested by Craig. So one is automated um, um, <coughs> renewal, and the other is giving 12-month notice. So I see um, Paul saying that he prefers to leave, uh, leave it to RIA boards and CEOs uh, to bash out. Uh, Craig, yes, I, I, yes I, I think the current document says fixed term. So the suggestion is rather than saying fixed term at this stage, just state the principle we consider as important. This is the fact that RIRs are the one in control of the contract, and then the term of the contract should allow this. So, um, Craig, no problem with leaving it to be considered later. So, um, if I'm not seeing any other comments, um, I would like to restate. But uh, Paul is in favor of fixed term, if anything. And Michael. Yes, um, sorry, I don't want to talk too much again, but um, the one item on this that I was thinking is that we can, when we go into the contract details, I, well, first of all, I want to say I support the high level principle statement that, that you're considering, because I think if we make the blanket statements or more generalized statements, it'll be easier one to incorporate into the proposal. And I think we can get consensus on that type of thing because you are correct. I think when we bring up very specific details, there are a host of ways that we can negotiate those contract details. And I think the high level approach would be more attuned to what we're trying to do here. Um, the one thing that is a tough thing for me is that if we start to put certain contract details into the proposal, it's very hard to argue why then other contract details shouldn't be in the proposal and that if we do too much, then um, some people will ask, well, why were we you know, willing to be detailed in some aspects, but not others? Um, I think the high-level approach works out best and then that we can iron out the details at a later time. I do think that what Felice uh, proposed and what Craig was commenting on are, are very good mechanisms. I've seen that in actual practice um, with other contracts, and I think that that is, uh, um, you know, a very good mechanism by doing so, but by referencing it too much in detail here, I think was probably not appropriate at this time. Thank you, Michael. And I see Nirani's hand. Thank you. I'll also try to keep my comments short. Uh, I think Michael actually uh, probably stated what I wanted to state. Uh, the, if we put some details in there, there'll be questions about why other details are not in there. And I think the, the reasons for us putting some of the details in there was this um, this idea that the control should be with us, for example. The, uh, the reasoning behind the fixed term had to do with this uh, uh, the review of the SLA. Uh, so whatever way we solve that, I'm not a lawyer, so I might not be, be best suited to, to to find the right legal framework for it. But I think, it, think it's important to put in the principles of what we are trying to achieve. And then I'm quite comfortable for, for the lawyers to, to do their magic. Thank you, Nurani. So um, perhaps um, related to the point of the, um, the term of the contract, it, um, how about, I see Andre, our communities are in control of the contract. Um, and including determination and SLA review. 
So the conditions of termination and um, SLA review should uh, reflect um, to achieve this. So um, I see Nurani um, agreeing with Andre, and um, so I think we do all agree that about a certain specific approach, um, but um, at the point of the a proposal that we're drafting, uh, we will we'll just uh, stick to these high-level principles, and then when we actually RI our staff and CEOs actually uh, can uh, figure it out, uh, we can actually um, move in the direction we think is the best, and it may very well be some of the options that's being uh, put um, discussed here. So, um, if Nirani and Paul are, call and of course other members of the Chris team are comfortable with this, then I would suggest that we will uh, put high-level principles um, only. We won't mention about fixed term. I see Michael's comment. Perhaps high-level principles that to ensure stability and flexibility to allow the contract holders to ensure proper performance of the duties required by the IANA operator. So, and then I think um, at Michael supporting Andre's comment. So, um, so as, as the next step, um, if Nurani and Paul feels that you have, we have discussed enough details that you feel comfortable that you are able to actually draw something, um, would you be able to share the draft and then people who feel strongly about this um, can um, give feedback with um, would this work? So I see um, Paul that he likes this approach and I'm not seeing any other comments so um, I would like to request uh, Nurani and Paul to uh, reflect this point um, in the current draft related to SLA. Thank you very much, Anurani. Yes. Did you want to say something? No, I was just going to say that we'll take that on. <laughs> Thank you, Nurani. Great. So, um, so I think we're done with agenda uh, item three covering ABC. And then let's move on to agenda four. So it's uh, to confirm status of um, issues that we've been discussing. And 4A, these are the issues that are to be reviewed on, on the mailing. So we didn't actually um, have discussions um, on the, at the CRISC team calls. And then um, I think some, I, I actually, sorry, I don't have access to the email, but I actually sent um, email to CRISC team about this. So um, please take a look, and if there's anything that you feel that you would like to comment, please uh, comment on the mailing list uh, within the coming 12 hours. And um, from my perspective, there are not any issues that are quite uh, substantial. So for example, uh, clarification about whether there's any impact on the existing MOUs, ASO MOUs or NRO MOUs or uh, making sure that people um, who wanted to comment on section number um, five, the NTIA requirement, uh, has, uh, makes comments. And these are the things that I, I raised. So please uh, take a look at the, um, at the email that I sent, which listed all the issues that I would like to confirm on the mailing list. And if there's no comment um, on those issues for the next 12 hours, uh, we'll incorporate um, the, what was agreed, uh, what was suggested uh, in our draft. I'm not seeing any comments, um, so let's move to uh, 4B. So reflecting Christine positions per issues, so um, first on um, intellectual property rights. Um, the status that I'm aware of is Andre has shared the draft, and then there's a comment, um, a suggested change on, on a part of it from Alan uh, to um, describe about the um, reverse zone um, in the IPR section, which um, Andre has uh, sent the draft for this. 
and I'm not seeing any other comments related to this which needs to be incorporated. Um, Andre, would you be able to um, confirm if my understanding is consistent with yours? Yes, and I saw a suggestion from you, uh, and maybe we should incorporate this in the IPR, just stating that that's our expectation, but other things in other community need to be confirmed for this to materialize. Oh, yeah, of course. Thank you very much for reminding me about the comment that I made. Yes, oh, thank you. And it would be great if you, if you could incorporate that as well. Thank you. So, um, so let's move on to review committee. And um, this is the part that has been drafted by Alan. And uh, he has incorporated the comments that I made. And um, I'd like to reconfirm if there's any other comments that needs to be reflected. Uh, as far as I'm aware, I've incorporated all the comments that I've seen. So if I've missed something, please remind me. Thank you. So the comment that you've incorporated is from me, right? No other comments observed. So that's, I'm not hearing from anybody about um, things that they actually raised. So I think I can assume that's a, a, a fair understanding. So uh, let's move on to um, service level agreement. And um, again, I seem to be the only person who commented on this part, uh, if I understand correctly. And then uh, Paul and Ronnie has already incorporated my comment. Um, does, um, do Paul and Ronnie want to add anything to this? I'm not seeing um, either of them wanting to make comments. Oh, um, so I think the, the status on the service level agreement is that um, based on the draft that um, you, Paul, and Rani has shared, I commented on um, minor editorial suggestion, which is already a reflected, and you sent the reflected version on the Christine list. And um, there's no other comments which needs to be incorporated in the um, the SLA section of um, of our proposal. Is this a fair understanding of the current status? Thank you, Paul, for confirming. Yes. So great. Um, so I think the next the the only um thing that needs a revised text is the IP. Our section to incorporate our comments. Uh, I think it would be helpful if um, if um, Andre could in, uh, send us the in, uh, the incorporated version so that um, it's clear to Michael what to um, reflect as red line. Would you be able to do that, Andre? Yes, I, I'll send the clean text to Michael so it's it's clear what changes should go in the document. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Andre. And uh, Nurani, um, and it, of course, um, you need to update the part about the term of the contract based on the discussions today. Yes, um, thank you. Great. And then um, I'd like to go to or see um, the issue status list. Um, it may be good. Um, I think I, I'd like to leave this at, at the very end to make sure that we we are uh, we have covered all the issues. And then I'd like to first move to five A. So I've sent the draft of the announcement to be sent, and uh, Andre has um, given me the feedback and. I already reflected his comments. So um, if anybody have, and else have any comments, uh, please comment on the mailing list within the next 12 hours so that I can incorporate it. And I'd like to also confirm the timing for the announcement to be made. And the rough target that um, I suggested at the last call is we, we make it uh, uh, just before um, 13 UTC, which is um, consistent with 
the time of the uh, regular call, just just to just to make it simple. Um, so if nobody has any um, comments or other suggestions, so uh, let's uh, prepare targeting this time. And does anybody have any comments? No, I don't uh, see. Any uh, comments? This is Alan. Yes, Alan. Yes. Um, before we publish the second draft, um, I hope we're going to have enough time within the CRISP team to review the the uh, next version, which is going to incorporate all all the updates that have been made in the past week. Um, I tried to go through the mailing list to look for updates, and I found more than 20 messages with. Um, people are providing text, so uh, it's going to be a big job for somebody to incorporate all those into the documents, and we will need internal time to review it before publication. Yes, I totally agree, Alan, and thank you for bringing this. Uh, it's, it's a good point, and that, um, that's exactly what I felt about um, um, so 5C timing to share the updated version with uh, with Chris team, and then. Um, it may also be uh, helpful to go um, to have a list of the um, the points that needs to be incorporated in the text. So for the IPR review committee and the um, the service level section, it's I think um, we actually have volunteers who, who are leading to um, to incorporate comments. So I think Michael can actually incorporate these comments. And then, um, but there are actually a couple of other points that um, sections that needs to um, be reflected. So um, I don't know what would be the best way. It should that if we actually look at the issues list, then it's possible to um, confirm. But um, and I'm just a little bit concerned that um, producing this um, this list of comprehensive text itself will take time. So the approach could be maybe um, it would be a, a lot of work for Michael. But um, I'll do a simple listing of the points that needs to be incorporated according to my memory. And then um, um, other Chris team members can double check if there's nothing um, that's been, um, that, that we've missed. And then also Michael, um, if you could also check for yourselves if um, we haven't missed anything. That may be um, the approach given that we, we have limited time. Do people have other suggestions? Michael, oh, is this an old hand? And oh, I see Andre. Yes, I think Andre was first, if you'd like to yes, go first. Yes, Andre. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, I agree with Ellen. I think uh, a review of the uh, red line text with all, I mean, the difference basically between version one and version two is very important. And my question is, the thing is, if we send the proposal at, at 1, 1 p.m., um, what are we going to exactly discuss on the call right after that? So my question is maybe we should spend more time on actually reviewing the proposal um, before sending it uh, rather than having a teleconference uh, post factum. So are you suggesting that uh, we, uh, we postpone the, uh, the timing of the announcement um, and then we review it, and then once we're clear about this, we, we actually send this to to the list. Um, is that your suggestion? Um, so I, I was thinking maybe initially we, we, we may not necessarily need to have a teleconference tomorrow if we complete the, uh, to send the announcement. But um, I'm also half open to the suggestion of, of postponing it. So, so both ways work. I actually don't have a, a concrete suggestion. I think uh, if, if we, uh, for instance, shift the time of the of the uh, release of the document that will give us more time, and we can spend the time not on the teleconference but actually reviewing the document. That's one option, and canceling mm -hmm. the, the the teleconference altogether. Another mm -hmm. option, as you suggested, we can actually have a teleconference to go uh, through the red line document and ensure that everything is correct. I don't know how effective, efficient that would be, but that would be another option. And then. Um, 
uh, sending the announcement um, after that. I, I, I honestly, okay. I would prefer to have more time for uh, textual review of the document and not spending this time on the teleconference. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for this suggestion, Andre. Um, I see a suggestion from Alan, prepare draft, hold meeting, agree on a draft at the meeting, and then send announcement. And I see Nurani are supporting Alan. Um, so, supposing that we, we don't cancel the teleconference, um, what would be the thing that we want to do? I think if we actually want to check the, um, the details of the sentences, it, it may be more effective to do this uh, online. But um, the time frame, we want to, um, to send the announcement by the 8th of January, and we haven't actually announced the exact time. And um, if we actually make it later, um, then it's going to be another date for some of the regions. And while well, we don't have to be too strict about it, I don't want to send the announcement too late for some of the regions. For example, for New Zealand, it's already the next day. So I see Paul. I think we have, to, we have had time to comment on the mailing list. So, and Paul is saying you uh, you don't want to go line by line through text. Yes, exactly. Um, so, how many people feel that? Um, yes. So how many people feel that um, we, we need to have another teleconference tomorrow before we release the draft? Alan. Uh, yeah, so I think we've had time to comment on the, the proposals that people have sent for, for particular sections, but we've not yet seen a combined document incorporating all the proposals. And I want time to, to verify that that combined document uh, hasn't accidentally left something out. And uh, uh, whether we do that in the mailing list or in a conference call doesn't make too much difference, but I think we do need to have time to check that. Thank you, Alan, for this comment. I totally agree. And um, so let's discuss this timing, um, which is um, set as the 5C of this um, C of this agenda item. and. Um, I'm not sure if it's sufficient to have discussed this at the teleconference. So I would like to suggest if um, Alan or others don't have a preference, um, it's better to do it, do it online rather than um, discussing um, this at the call. So um, that's my suggestion. And I see uh, Craig doesn't think we need another meeting before draft being released, and uh, that's consistent with my suggestion. Email is fine, um, and Paul agreeing, so great. Um, so let's not have another meeting tomorrow, and we simply just uh, confirm online. So, um, and then, so the timing uh, to share the, up, um, the updated version within Chris' team, um, that's Agenda 5C. Um, so it might hand, yes. Nurani, please. Thank you for taking the floor again. Um, I'm, I'm happy with that approach. Uh, just two points. One is, is that I think we need to, I agree with Alan, I, I, I want to see the full final document and be able to review that uh, properly and say yes or no to, to that. Um, uh, I do think uh, we need to have a formal uh, last call on our on our um, internal crisp list um, so that everyone knows uh, if we're not going to have a telephone conference, everyone knows by what time they need to have responded to to the last draft. Um, and then uh, my second point was about uh, how we then handle the process announcements, et cetera, to uh, the global list, but we can take that later. Thank you. 
Thank you, Nurani. And I see Andre. Well, I, I agree with Norani, and I think what we need to agree here is the actual time frame of, for this last call, that everyone is comfortable with this last call um, is duration. And I think it's more a question to Michael when uh, he thinks the red line version can be released uh, to the Chris team for review um, and then the cut of the uh, time. Uh, so I think that's important that we all understand that we have sufficient time for proper review of this document. Michael. Yeah, so I think that's a good segue because this is exactly what I wanted to um, to bring up when I um, wanted to comment was that uh, I'll be working on the red line today. Now, the one good thing with our time differences is that I'm a little bit behind the rest of you. So I think a lot of discussion has gone by. Um, Zumi, I know that, um, you know, and I, and I thank you for the idea that I think you're going to try to put together at least a list of some of the items that needed to be included in the um, the second draft proposal. I'm personally trying to put together a checklist as I go through the email, uh, all the mailing list input to try to see um, and make sure that I catch everything that's going to be put into the second draft, you know, additional proposed text and everything else. Um, one thing I would ask for the team's help, and, and you won't hurt my feelings in, in doing so, in the sense of if any of you have specific text um, that you are tasked to, uh, to volunteer in terms of, of drafting, um, if you could just send it to me, you know, what you think the final text is as a reminder, one, um, both so I know that it is the, the final text that you have essentially resolved to and based on what the comments were, but two, it also puts it to the top of my my email list so that it makes it easier to find. Um, I'll do so and then incorporate it in. And then um, with regard to the text, I will incorporate what um, what you all have come to. Uh, the one thing that I will try to do is clean up, and you've seen this in the in the first draft, where sometimes there's inconsistencies or um, trying to um, move things around. So I may change some stuff around like that, but the intent is never going to be to change what the um, the meaning behind it is. So as we review it all, uh, definitely uh, comment to me back on that and let let me know if I've missed anything or I've misconstrued anything. I anticipate in terms of timing being able to do that uh, by around close of business, my time. I have some things over at the office I need to take care of, but um, right now it's 9 a.m. over here on the East Coast. So I'm gonna devote quite a bit of time to this, but I guess the question I have for all of you is when do you think you can have a last call um, in terms of when the comments will essentially be closed so that I know not to keep looking back for additional items. Um, and then once that's in, I'll, I'll definitely work to, to push to get this out as early as possible. So hopefully at least some of you, by the time you're um, able to, to review it, it'll be ready in your inbox and, and whatnot. Because I know some of you are about to go to sleep on this, on this call. Thank you, Michael. And um, so closing off the last comment, um, I actually don't see too many issues that need additional um, sorting out, except for the point that we actually um, discussed on the SLA about the term. And then everything else, I think the comments have already been sent on the mailing list. And, and so the only thing that people who, at least for people who are actually closely looking at the, the list is the, the part about the SLA. So, um, how about we give um, five hours uh, or six hours window for closing? Three hours, okay. Um, if that's um, yeah. So suppose that we give like five or six hours. Um for people to comment, and oh. then I don't know if this gives you sufficient time, um, Michael, for you to work on this. And then um, it might be good, supposing that we we stick with, um, we, we can be flexible, but um, we, we stick with the initial target of 13 UTC, then um, maybe we give um, six hours window for people to comment on the, the on the latest draft. I, I don't know if you would be able to reflect them though, Michael. Um, I don't, you, are you going to be awake at that time? Oh, 
Okay, thank you. So uh, let's give a six hours window um, for people to comment on the draft that is being that will be sent by Michael. So um, so that would make it uh, seven UTC. And so if Mike, would you be able to share the draft um, to the Chris team list by seven UTC, Michael? Would that be a fair time for you? Would that be a reasonable time for you? Okay. Then, um, yes, I agree with Alan that um, the only one that needs um, the text awaiting is the SLA part. And then I think we already um, sent the ones on the mailing list. So I think, Michael, you can actually start working on the other parts except SLA. I mean, there's always a potential that people might comment at the last minute, but I think all the people who are active, that they have pretty much um, commented on the mailing list. So um, on the really not so controversial um, points, maybe um, it's up to you that you can start working on it. And then, um, so we will close the comment, um, say, five hours after this call. I have to figure out the time, the, the time conversion. Um, so five hours after this call would be nineteen UTC. So I think you would have um, twelve hours to work on the draft. Um, eight or nine UTC would be better. Nine AM UTC. So to close the um the comment at nine AM UTC and then um Michael to Okay, thank you, Michael. So um so Michael can start working on what's already available so far, and then, um, so, and then you will share the, the updated draft by um, 7 UTC. And then we will actually have um, six hours to comment. 7 UTC, yes. Would that be okay, Michael? Okay, great. Thank you. And then, so we will have the um, we will have uh, six hours to comment. And um, well, but we actually, I think we we need to actually. Michael needs time to update the feedback. So I think we actually need to set the time again to close the comments. So. Um, at twelve UT. Um, at uh, 11 UTC, we will close the comments. You're running. Yes, uh, please. I think maybe uh, someone else is better than me to figure this out. No, no, no. I'm not at all claiming to be better at time zone conversion. <laughs> uh, but I just, uh, because we're all throwing different times at each other, I'm, I think I'm equally confused um, uh, to you. Uh, would it make sense to work backwards to say when is the latest time we feel that we need to announce this to the global list? Maybe that is uh, uh, whenever, whenever it's the eighth, um, 2300 uh, in New Zealand or, or wherever it is, uh, and then um, give ample time before that for us to to give our final uh, have our last call and then work back from that. Is that a good approach? I think it's, uh, thank you for this suggestion. It's very good. Um, if we try to meet the uh, day for New Zealand, then we may have to move the deadline um, two hours, hours before. So we, we may need to target 11, um, 11 UTC to be exact. Um, 10.59 UTC. Um, I don't know if that would be a little bit aggressive. Uh, 
Um, so, um, my, my suggestion would be maybe let's uh, set the 13 UTC time, which is usually the time that we, we actually conduct the call and it, it seems to be a, 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 um, quite a regular time for our Chris team. So um, and then set go backwards and then we so to do to this um, I think we need that uh, we need some time for NL secretariat to um, update the um, draft on the NL website. So if we want to be safe, maybe uh, by 12 UTC we need the final final draft um, to be sent to the Chris team list and then um, to give people. Have, some time um, to give feedback. Um, so minus maybe five hours, then that would uh, be seven UTC for Michael to give the um, draft, um, to, to share the, the initial draft of the incorporating comments. And then um, for Michael to incorporate comments, including the SLA, um, how much time do you think you need, um, Paul and Narani, for to to incorporate the comment um, that was received at the call today? Would three or four hours be sufficient, or do you need more time? Oh, I, I think that's plenty of time. Okay, so um, that is another four hours after this. So um three four hours after this. So that would be eighteen UTC. So we'll be closing comments of um suggested text after uh four hours of, um but before eighteen UTC. So four hours uh, roughly four hours from now. And then Michael can send in the comments on the, the re reflecting all the comments at 7 UTC. Then we will um, call for um, feedback on the um, on the Christine mailing list um, until 11 UTC. Would that give you enough time, Michael, to incorporate the comments? And then um, Hopefully, people will try to give any comments as uh, early as possible, and then we will have the updated, um, the final, final version from Michael at 12 UTC, and give um, some buffer for NL Secretariat to um, to update um, this on the NL website. So. Thank you very much, Alan, for listing this up. I was going to suggest uh, I'll send this to the mailing list, but I think it's good that we're able to see this right now. And then maybe give you like uh, maybe 30 seconds to do the time conversion if necessary and um, see if that works. Yeah, great, Alan, and also Michael as well. Thank you so much. So I think we have agreed on the general timeline. Yes, indeed, that um, both Michael and Alan's uh, time is consistent, so it's great. So um, unless people have any concerns about this uh, time being set, then let's uh, work with this schedule and uh, I'm conscious of time. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, it's running a little bit late. So I think we've uh, covered um, five A, B, C. These are all the items that I actually wanted to confirm: the deadline for comments to be submitted and timing to for, to share the updated version within Christie. And then um, the last point I actually wanted to cover was um, the issue status list, and um, we did cover this at the last call. The only um, major update that um, I that was necessary was uh, reflecting JP Nick's comments, and then uh, we do actually need to uh, add um, the two points um, that I've listed uh, in the agenda, which is um, a 
uh, agenda item three, A, B, C, we need to update um, the status on these. Um, so these are the things that will be added. And then um, I will actually um, do the same thing as uh, Michael. I will share on the Chris team list the latest uh, status of issues list based on what we agreed. And then you can take time to review and see if you're comfortable, especially with the Chris team status that is being described. And then we will, um, we will um, post this on the NL website uh, together with the second draft. So we'll keep with the same deadline as for the second draft. Does that work for everybody? I'm not seeing um, additional comments, and I'm indeed, uh, I agree with Paul. I'm totally impressed with both um, Alan and Michael for keeping up with some of the time. It's, it's quite difficult even for me, so thank you. And um, I think we've covered all the points on the agenda today. And um, so is there anything else you would like to discuss? Um, I, I do recall Anurani has commented on adding uh, information on NRO list about the mailing list archives of the IANA um, transfer list, the NRO list, as well as the Chris team list. And I don't think this is controversial. So um, let's uh, request NRO secretariat to do this. So I'm not seeing um, any additional hands up or comments. So um, thank you very much. Um, hand up. Oh, okay, Nurani, please. Apologies for, for keeping you all. Um, I, I just wanted to, uh, we don't have to have a long discussion about it, but I just uh, wanted to uh, put a few questions about what the next steps are and making sure that we're very clear also in our communications uh, to the global list, but also to our regional lists about what the next steps are. Uh, once we send out the second draft, what information we put in there. Um, according to the timeline we have, we've said Monday 12th January, wrap up final comments made to IANA transfer. What that actually means, and I think we need to be clear about uh, what input we are or are not requesting. Uh, as the, the second draft really is uh, the close to final draft of, of the proposal. Uh, so we're clear to the community about what they can expect after the 8th uh, and what we will send out on the 12th. Um, and of course, then uh, what happens between the 12th and the 15th. Uh, maybe that's something we can uh, discuss uh, on the mailing list and we don't need to talk about it here, but I wanted to raise it so to make sure that we're absolutely clear on that. Thank you. Thank you, Nurani. And uh, we might want to cover very briefly on what would be the expectation, at least for the second draft that the we're, we're target arm um, that we have and then uh, the, the, the deadline. So I, I, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting any changes to the deadline, which is um, um, a plan to be the 12th. And then uh, in terms of the comment, I think it's the general expectation is that uh, we have covered major points um, for the first draft. So we hope we don't uh, receive any substantial um, requests for changes for the second draft. But I'm not sure if it's, it's appropriate for us to actually ex explicitly say this. So the current announcement simply just um, you know, uh, makes a call for comments from the community. So the, the actual um, natural expectation is that people simply recheck whether their uh, comments are being covered and comfortable with the issues that's been discussed so far. But uh, I think it's a little bit difficult to stop people from uh, raising new issues if they feel strongly about it. And um, so we do definitely want to cover um, what we're going to do after the 12. Um, that we'll, I will probably do the similar uh, process and uh, from the running. Thank you, Jimmy. Well, I agree with you, and I think that that's also my my point. Uh, but 
um, we also don't want to find ourselves in a situation where we, between the 8th and the 12th, get an avalanche of, of comments. I'm not, I don't think this will happen, uh, but I think it's really clear about setting the, rec the, the right expectations. Would it, be an, uh, would it not be appropriate to call it a last call or, or a final approval or, or something of, of that sort to make it clear that this is really the, the proposal that uh, all these discussions this year uh, has uh, materialized into and um, but of course we give some time for reflection or, or for minor fixes etc. Oh, thank you, Nurani. Yes, I, I see your point uh, much more clear. Yes, I think it would be good to call this the final, the, the last call for the uh, draft and then um, based on um, it would, you know, actually hint that this is actually like uh, making sure and doing the final check. So I think we can actually um, rephrase this, um, what we mentioned as the second draft, as the last uh, draft and last call for announcement. And um, I think we can do that. So I'll take a look at the announcement draft and then see if this is actually reflected. So thank you very much, Nurani, for um, raising this point. Okay, um, thank you, Nurani, for, um, for your comment. And um, we did have actually a quite in intensive um, discussions uh, for this call, so glad that we actually organized this. Um, so um, anything else that you would like to discuss while we're, um, we, we are quite over the time, but if there's anything that people feel is absolutely important, then um, Maybe I'm, I can open for one more comment. Okay. Um, thank you all then um, for all the inputs you've given and for participating for long hours. So uh, let's, uh, if this, uh, until we publish the second draft, it's going to be quite a tough time for um, work quite intensely. But uh, let's keep up with work and um, let's get uh, keep engagement on the mailing list. So thank you all. Um, so this is the end of the meeting.